Upton Tallins is quite a, a very large town within the borough of Merseyside. We are a post-industrial um, revolution town. We were a pioneers in a lot of things. Work was plentiful. It was just in a prime location. Then the Pilkingtons arrived. They saw the potential in being able to make some kind of product and to be able to get it out fast. Because glass was starting to become the norm at this point, we was able to expand the business of St. Helens. They were so successful, Pilkingtons, with their glass and the glass making, is they decimated the glass industry. Beecham, he arrived as the chemist. And then over the road to, um, from Beecham's, Greenalls arrive and he starts brewing beer. And they all just sort of came together. I think there was definitely some kind of decline happened maybe around about the late 1980s of which the town shifted. The main concern for me is the town seems to be stagnated at the moment. More and more areas, like where I live, uh, we have massive antisocial problems. There are little opportunities for uh, the youth to um, reach their full potential. There's just more opportunities out in the city as well. You know, there's just a lot more going on. The concerning thing for me, from a nearly 50 year old, is seeing youth um, have, think they have to leave the town to achieve what they want to achieve. Just being out there, making making new friends, seeing what like a city life was like. You know, you, once you've got a taste of that there, you don't really want to come back to St Helens. I've lived at the back of the town hall now since 2015, and that is becoming a prime example of a ghettoised area. We have lots of violence problems. I've seen two machete fights on my front in 12 months. Like a council house in, in Clockface, because that's where my nan lived. That side, that side of Clockface, it was a really, really rough end. You know, it was quite intimidating. There was always this big, big lanky guy come walking down to like a little borough past ours. Apparently he'd just go down, go and get his fix of drugs or whatever, go back to his house and he'd just rinse and repeat. When you've got nothing to do and you've got no hope, it's pretty much like what you see with the homeless, is the only way to do it is to self-medicate. And it's just an escapism. And no one's done anything about that. We are now in probably the third decade of the crisis, of the extreme mental health crisis. That comes down to closing of the minds. That was the, the, I would say that was a trigger. There was no more work. And I think from that it's just snowballed and snowballed and snowballed. Particularly for the male population because we still haven't shook off that whole, the man should be the provider because it's so entrenched in the St. Helens man mentality. No town wants to be referred to as the suicide capital of the UK. You know, it's a combination of a few things. There's a lot of people in St. Helens who are, who are really struggling. You'll find that St. Helens has high level of heavy drinkers, problematic drinkers and drug users, which as we know invariably, you know, this is never good for anybody's mental health. And in terms of mental health support in the schools, there, there certainly isn't enough. I think this would help people going into schools and educating 
uh, young people on how to manage the feelings, how to regulate their emotions. And there needs to be more done and more funding that just isn't there at the moment. You know, when I was growing up, mental health just didn't exist. You were just under pressure. I can walk into this clubhouse today and the lads are openly talking about it. People in the world are teaching them how to create and maybe be aware of mental health. And those lads, those senior players now are act upon that. And it's just about talking. So the message is definitely um, getting out there. And I think a lot more lads, particularly the fellas in this town are particularly starting to take a little bit more control over it and a bit more awareness of it. So Momo is named after my grandmother and I wanted to emulate somewhere where you can go I'm just going to Momo's for a brew and you'll walk through the door and there's going to be somebody here that can help you to bridge over to the professionals with some level of trust. It can be quite difficult to build those bridges and to raise awareness and uh, you know to get people to know that, that, that there's a service out there I feel what can work really well and, and does uh, already work quite effectively for, for ourselves is uh, what we call a walk and talk, which is ultimately a walk with nature. And, and we've been walking around Taylor Park uh, on a weekly basis. This works really well because they see the human side of mental health workers and can offer further support. It's been long for years that there was always this phrase, we're losing community spirit, um, particularly over the last 10 years, so the community spirit has been lost a little bit. But I think it's starting to come back. I think people are starting to realise that community hubs, whether this football club or it's a football club down the road or it's a rugby club around the corner or whatever it may be, that sense of community is starting to build around it and I think people are starting to embrace that. People in, in my position, um, and you know whether that's a chairman or a secretary or a coach are starting to understand the benefits of community and um, they build on that and I think the public as a whole is starting to realise that community is the way and, um, and you've got to build it on a local level and, for, and support your fellow, fellow neighbour so to speak. My dream for St Helens would be that everybody's fulfilled that there's enough things to do in this small town that if you yourself have a dream, that dream is achievable. To get better, I think um, we only have to go down the road and you understand visually what the challenges of this town has got. If you have faith in yourself, because um, we've, we've discussed this in, in the past, is that you've got so many people that look from the outside into St. Helens, yeah, that town is rubbish, it's nothing there. It becomes that self-fulfilling prophecy. I'd like to see more funding uh, come to St. Helens and improvements in mental health support, certainly for young people. I think the government and local government, or equally the community, needs to believe in the town and invest in the town, invest wisely and it's up to us to, to change the attitude, the way this town goes and where it should go.